It's a great day in pre-AP chemistry at Bryan High School, so let's talk about the periodic table. The periodic table is instantly recognizable. It's not just in every chemistry lab worldwide. It's found on t-shirts, coffee mugs, and shower curtains. But the periodic table isn't just another trendy icon. It's a massive slab of human genius. Up there with the Taj Mahal, the Mona Lisa, and the ice cream sandwich. And the table's creator, Dmitry Mendeleev, is a bona fide science hall of famer. But why? What's so great about him and his table? Is it because he made a comprehensive list of the known elements? Nah, you don't earn a spot in science Valhalla just for making a list. Besides, Mendeleev was far from the first person to do that. Is it because Mendeleev arranged elements with similar properties together? Not really, that had already been done too. So what was Mendeleev's genius? Let's look at one of the first versions of the periodic table from around 1870. Here we see elements designated by their two-letter symbols arranged in a table. Check out the entry at the third column, fifth row. There's a dash there. From that unassuming placeholder springs the raw brilliance of Mendeleev. That dash is science. By putting that dash there, Dmitri was making a bold statement. He said, and I'm paraphrasing here, Y'all haven't discovered this element yet. In the meantime, I'm going to give it a name. It's one step away from aluminum, so we'll call it Eka aluminum. Eka being Sanskrit for one. Nobody's found Eka aluminum yet, so we don't know anything about it, right? Wrong. Based on where it's located, I can tell you all about it. First of all, an atom of Eka aluminum has an atomic weight of 68, about 68 times heavier than a hydrogen atom. When Eka aluminum is isolated, you'll see it's a solid metal at room temperature. It's shiny, it conducts heat really well, it can be flattened into a sheet, stretched into a wire, but its melting point is low, like freakishly low. Oh, and a cubic centimeter of it will weigh six grams. Mendeleev could predict all of these things simply from where the blank spot was and his understanding of how the elements surrounding it behaved. A few years after this prediction, a French guy named Paul Emile Lecoq de bois baudrin discovered a new element in ore samples and named it gallium after Gaul, the historical name for France. Gallium is one step away from aluminum on the periodic table. It's Eka aluminum. So were Mendeleev's predictions right? Gallium's atomic weight is 69.72. A cubic centimeter of it weighs 5.9 grams. It's a solid metal at room temperature, but it melts at a paltry 30 degrees Celsius, 85 degrees Fahrenheit. It melts in your mouth and in your hand. Not only did Mendeleev completely nail gallium, he predicted other elements that were unknown at the time. Scandium, germanium, rhenium. The element he called echomanganese is now called technetium. Technetium is so rare, it couldn't be isolated until it was synthesized. In a cyclotron in 1937, almost 70 years after Dmitri predicted its existence, 30 years after he died, Dmitri died without a Nobel Prize in 1907, but he wound up receiving a much more exclusive honor. In 1955, scientists at UC Berkeley successfully created 17 atoms of a previously undiscovered element. This element filled an empty spot in the periodic table at number 101 and was officially named Mendelevium in 1963. There have been well over 800 Nobel Prize winners, but only 15 scientists have an element named after them. So the next time you stare at a periodic table, whether it's on the wall of a university classroom or on a $5 coffee mug, Dmitry Mendeleev, the architect of the periodic table, will be staring back. So that's a great video to show you uh, all about science and the scientific method and how uh, he was able to predict an element. Uh, where it was, uh, what kind of properties it would have, its melting point, um, and even its uh, density. So we'll actually do a lab where we'll try to predict some densities of some, uh, some elements. Um, and I'll also, that periodic table at the end that I'll show you right here, uh, it said that there were 15 scientists have had um, elements named after him. Uh, that's actually a little outdated. Now we've uh, named a few more uh, we, um, that are named after scientists uh, since these elements here were named. 
So, but we name, we award Nobel scientists, uh, Nobel prizes every year, but we don't always invent new elements every year. So it's quite a wonderful spot for him to be in. So, uh, anyways, we'll uh, take, keep moving and take a look at the periodic table. It's the most important tool that we use in chemistry, if you hadn't figured it out. Uh, and we can understand and predict properties of elements using this. So the, uh, the video was mostly about Mendeleev, but um, before Mendeleev, there were some historical developments uh, going on. The first, per uh, first person we'll talk about is Doberiner, uh, Johann Wolfgang uh, Doberiner, and he uh, started to group elements together in groups of three, and we call them triads. Uh, so what he noticed was a repeating pattern of um, groups of three when you would find their atomic masses, you could um, find a numerical value to find their average in between. So he noticed that there was a similar pattern between their um, uh, masses. And so he came up with the rule of triads. Now, um, uh, Cannizzaro was able to develop a method to uh, determine the uh, atomic, uh, uh, specifically, <laughs> precisely determine the me uh, method of atomic masses of an element. So which really paved the way for Mendeleev. Um, and so Newlands, and notice that all these guys are kind of right, all um, one in line, uh, at a very close amount of time, is uh, Newlands comes up with the law of octaves, and so every eighth element had a similar properties. Well, if you look at the periodic table, it goes, uh, the first two rows have, um, sorry, the second and third row have eight elements in them, and then the, the uh, fourth row has eight elements, but it also has the transition element stuck in there. So he was able to notice um, a repeating pattern here. So almost like music, you know how you repeat every eight notes, you know, um, in a scale. Well, it's the same type of thing. So he was able to come up with some type of uh, list that looks kind of like this. So Newlands was about octaves, and then Mendeleev comes along and is um, right after that, and he was able to arrange them according to atomic mass. So remember, big key right here, he arranged them by atomic mass. They did not know what protons were at the time, so they did not know the atomic number. Uh, they did know the atomic mass, though. So um, he's, uh, and like the video said, he was able, he, the specific anomaly and specific thing that he did was he left gaps in his periodic table of elements that hadn't been discovered yet. And he was the first person to really get credit for this. And so we say Mendeleev invented the first periodic table. Now, it's not what you look like, not, not what you're used to seeing. Um, it's actually uh, looks like this. But if you actually look at Russian periodic tables, they still use this one. So uh, it's kind of crazy, but you can still see group one, two, three, all the way up to group eight. And then the transition metals are actually stuck um, somewhere down here. Okay. Um, now, after Mendeleev, um, after we discover the proton, Henry Mosley decides that um, there's a better way to arrange this, and we're able to discover, uh, we're able to arrange them by atomic number. So this is the most similar way of what we understand now. Okay, so, uh, and he arranges them with that, and he, we end up with this type of periodic table here. Again, not exactly what you're used to. Um, so, other versions of the periodic table look like this, and which is kind of crazy. Uh, you can see the first, uh, and the second, and the third, fourth, and fifth, and then sixth and seventh periods. Uh, and you can even see the orbitals right here. See how that works? Uh, there's the S, P, D, and F. Um, and then a crazy little one right here I think is interesting, but is still a useful gr uh, part. They're grouping them together by properties right here. And so you still have your groups that are arranged by properties. And then another crazy one uh, that are still arranged by groups of properties, which if you hadn't figured out is a good hint right here. And I'm not entirely sure what this one is. 
uh, how you would be able to uh, gather information from that one. But um, that's going to be it. So this is the modern uh, type of periodic table that you see, and we started arranging them in groups and periods here. So what we the big transition here is the fact that we added the transition metals that are in the inside. So this is the modern periodic table that you see. Um, now, uh, one key thing right here that, let me see if I can find it. So Mendeleev ordered it by atomic mass. So if you start counting here by their atomic masses, you'll see that they all increase. 50, and then 52, and then 54, and then 55.85, and then we get to 58.93, we're still increasing and then it actually decreases from right here. So this is a special property of their isotopes or whatever, but this laid, led to a discrepancy that Mendeleev actually got these backwards. So Mosley was the one who had to come in and reverse them. So uh, there are a couple discrepancies why Mendeleev's and Mosley's are a little bit different in his elements here. Now there's another place that it happens I can't remember. But go ahead and see if you can find it. Uh, there, there is another discrepancy, but this is the biggest one um, that I like to see. Uh, yeah. So on a periodic table, the uh, groups are the vertical columns uh, in the in the in the group, and there are 18 groups. Now there are um, they are the elements with the similar properties. So. Uh, similar reactivities. Either they do react really well or they don't react. Um, but they all have the same similar reactivity. That's because they have the same um, amount of valence electrons. And so the similar electron structures. Okay, for example, these are all 1s1 or uh, s1. They have one electron in the s orbital. These have two electrons in the s orbital and so on. Okay, so periods are horizontal rows with elements in the periodic table, and there are seven periods, like so. So these are the energy levels. These represent your energy levels uh, in uh, the relating back to the last unit. So this is actually what the periodic table should look like. Um, it is normally too big to fit on a piece of paper, so that's why we cut them off. We take this F block right here, and then we insert it down underneath. Uh, like in this picture, but this row is supposed to be right here, okay, and then this row is supposed to be right here. So just letting you guys know, um, that's what it's supposed to be like. Okay, okay. so in your uh, notes or somewhere, you need to make sure that you're squared away on this, because uh, you need to know the names of these groups, and that's going to be on the test, it's going to be a big thing. So. Um, Group one is called the alkali metals. Let's make sure that we're aware of that. Alkali metals. And now group two is called the alkaline earth metals. And then this row, this group right here, this D block of elements is called the transition metals. And then the F block is called the inner transition metals or the rare earth elements. Uh, group 17 is called the halogens. And then group 18 is called the noble gases. Make sure you're good to go on that. Um, there are metals metalloids and nonmetals, but that's not a big deal in this unit. Okay, and so where we're going to get to go on this in this unit is we're going to try to sort things um, based on their their physical properties um, and try to see how the periods work. So if we're actually looking at the atomic size right here, what we'll notice is there's an increase in the size here and then a decrease in the size here. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to look at the periodic table as a whole and notice trends um, going left and right and also up and down. So it's very important that you know what a group is and you know what a period is. Okay? So um, we'll, more on this later. For right now we're just going to do a couple practice questions. The element of which of these groups on the periodic table are the most resistant to forming compounds? Uh, we be group 18. Um, group 18 is the noble gases, so they do not bond, they do not um, react. So these are the least reactive ones. Uh, let's see, question two. 
Oxygen exists naturally as two atoms double bonded to each other. What other element has a similar bonding pattern? Is it going to be nitrogen, sulfur, hydrogen, or chlorine? Well, it's probably going to be sulfur. Here's oxygen. And then, is it going to be nitrogen, sulfur, hydrogen, or chlorine? It's probably going to be sulfur because it has a similar bonding pattern. It's going to be the similar, um, the one in the same group. Uh, the one has this, a similar electron structure. Okay, because the ones in the same group have similar electronic structures. Uh, which period four element will have similar chemical properties to nitrogen? So here's nitrogen. And then here's, uh, and your choices are phosphorus, arsenic, oxygen, or uh, germanium. Uh, that, that should be an oxygen. That's oxygen right there. So which period four element will have similar chemical properties to nitrogen? Uh, it could be arsenic, or it could be phosphorus. I'm sorry, period four element. So this is the only period four element. Sorry. So it's got to be arsenic. Aha. Uh -huh. Good, Mr. Russell. All right, and then question four. Neon is an inert gas that is used in advertising signs. Which of the following gases could be used to replace neon in the signs? Is it going to be argon? Here's neon. Is it going to be argon, hydrogen, oxygen, or nitrogen? Oh, you guys got me. It's going to be argon. All right. Now question five. Again, because it's a similar property. Question five asks, boron is an element that has three valence electrons. Which of the following elements is most likely to have three valence, uh, most likely has three valence electrons also? Uh, so there's boron right there. And then our choices are carbon, zinc, silicon, and aluminum. So that's probably going to be aluminum, right? Aluminum has three valence electrons because it also is in the same group. I'm hoping you guys are noticing a pattern here. So uh, mastery check. Uh, the original periodic table is developed by blank and arranged by blank. The modern periodic table is developed by blank and arranged by blank. Which of the following elements is a member of the halogen family and located in period three? A, argon, B, bromine, C, chlorine, D, sulfur. People with high blood pressure are instructed by their doctors to cut back on their salt intake or sodium chloride. Which of the following elements will make a good substitute for the sodium in order to make a different blank chloride? A. Magnesium. B. Calcium. C. Potassium. D. Aluminum. Okay, guys, um, one thing you'll have to do on your assignment is to try to locate um, elements and under pick out an element based on its electron configuration. So if I gave you an electron configuration that said neon 3s2, that is its um, shorthand configuration, what you would try to do is you would have to just, uh, figure out where that element is. So um, you can essentially ignore this shorthand right here and just look at 3s2 well that means that it's in the third row because it's 3s2 the 3 means the row number the s means the block it's going to be in remember this is the s block and then 2 means that it's the second element over so this is going to be magnesium right here that's uh, 3s2 so what I would say is it's in the third row, second group, it's in the alkali earth metals, and um, it's in the S block. 
Now, if I was to get another one, uh, let's say, uh, I don't know, I'll just say 3D7. I'll, I'll leave off the, uh, that's supposed to be a 7 up here, sorry. Let's just say we had 3D7. So I'll leave off the shorthand um, double guess. But uh, that means that it's going to be in not the third row because this is 3D. So 3D elements are all right here. So what you're going to do is you're going to look at this kind of row right here. This is the D block. And the 3D elements are going to be, it's, you're going to count seven over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So your answer would be cobalt. Uh, so that would be in the fourth period. Uh, I would say it's in the ninth group. Okay. It's in the D block. All right. Uh, you'll have to do that for your um, assessment today. So just making sure you're squared away. All right. Have a good day.